Roswell flight test crew here today to take a look at the X Aircraft X650 Value Edition. Now, what? Oh, got a video call from Cliff. Oh, really? Hey, Roswell dudes, remember when we were in Vegas? No, we better not tell everybody. I suppose to stay in Vegas. But while we were in Vegas, you checked out our new Vortex Hexacopter. 3D printed Hexacopter. Now, I have a surprise for you. I know you guys like yellow and black. So take a look at this. Very cool, huh? Yellow and black Vortex built just for the Roswell. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, I can't tell you that this will be a full production model yet because yellow in 3D printing is very hard to come by. But we made this one just for you. So I wanted to let you know it. It's going in the box this afternoon. It's been test flown, completely built. You guys ought to have a great time with it. Have fun and let me know what you think. Wow. That was fast. Let's uh <laughs> let's do this one instead. Uh-huh. <laughs> so this is the Atlanta Hobby Vortex. Now this is a 3D printed aircraft, custom designed, and they used a million dollar aerospace printer, not your maker bot to print this, so, that, so it's a little bit more robust as far as the printing is concerned. It's very, very cool. And we received this assembled, so it came as is in bubble and wrap, or foam and bubble wrap and peanuts. So the gear just pulls off, easy to replace. They've actually changed this since we last saw this aircraft. They hollowed it out for weight, I imagine. So that just attaches there. And in the front here, it's got a place for a gimbal and for a camera. On the bottom here, this is for your light bridge. So your video transfer can go there, light bridge. And of course, the battery goes in the back. You've got access to USB that programmed the NASA in there. And you've got, of course, the light so you can see it when you're flying. It's also got lights on the bottom. So you've got two green forward and you've got red aft on all the other limbs here. So that's pretty handy. So this aircraft uses the DJI E600 propulsion system, which are these beautiful motors, ESCs, and props. So in typical DJI fashion, they have the self-tightening propellers. The silver ones tighten clockwise, the black ones tighten counterclockwise, so they're very easy to remove. Simply just spin it off, and when you spin it back on, they will tighten in flight, so they're unlikely to come off. So, very nice. And this stout aircraft has a very stout battery to go along with it. But this is a 16 amp battery, it's enormous. Just for comparison, here's the radio. <laughs> it's huge. It also weighs more than the radio. Possibly more than the aircraft, but we'll find that out in a second here. So I'm actually very, very curious here. So, got a little scale here. Okay, I'm just going to stick the aircraft on the scale. And what do we have here? We have six pounds, 3.6 ounces it looks like. And the battery weighs four pounds, 5.2 ounces. So since we can't really do an unboxing, let's do an unassembling and see what's under the bonnet. Looks like we need a little hex there. So I've got my trusty multi-tool and my bit kit. I believe I have the right one for this in here somewhere. Perfect. 9 64ths. Okay, so last screw and the top is loose. Now I'm going to put the gear back on because I can't flip it back over with the gear off and have it sit in place. So Okay, under the bonnet we have oh Hey, the GPS is built into the top there. That's smart. We have a Futaba receiver in here. We have a Nasa V2. Um, and the cables are laid out very nicely here. They're all tied up nicely and just they're twisted together. The antenna has been uh, cinched down with a little bit of dab of hot glue there for proper diversity. They split the antennas apart, so not going in the same direction, which is kind of nice. I like the layout. And this is the first plate. Everything mounts right to that. Looks like it comes off though. So let's take a look and see what's under this plate. Okay, so last screw, three screws holding this plate on here, and I'm not going to pull too tight because of the wires here, but it looks like it's actually pretty tight in there where there's a little power distribution board, 
some of the LED lighting array wiring is in there. So it's actually pretty, it's very clean. Oh, and of course the power hitter on the back, that's my, one of my favorite features of this aircraft is having the power right in the back and not having wire hanging out, which is really cool. So you can definitely see some uh, attention to detail was, was kept here. And it's got a big place in front so you can mount your gimbal controller if you've got it and a wire to pass through video and you've got plenty of space to mount your video transmitter. And of course, being plastic, it's going to be ARP neutral, which is great. So, so I guess let's uh, put it back together and see how it flies. All right, so it's already to take this thing flying. First of all, I just want to say, Cliff, thank you. It's so cool you made this in our colors, and I think it looks awesome. So thanks very much for that. And the second thing I want to say is, it's interesting, because Cliff and the boys at Atlanta Hobby seem to have followed my design philosophy here. I'm not into all these little balsa wood frames and make it light, and oh, every gram counts. I say build it tough, put a giant battery and some big motors on and see if it flies. And this is really going to be my design philosophy writ large. So I'm curious to see how it's going to fly. So before we went flying, we went through the compass calibration process. This is always a good idea when you've changed locations with your aircraft. And after all, this one's gone 3,000 miles to get here. With final preparations complete, it was time to put the Vortex through her paces. Well, Cliff and the boys did not disappoint. In spite of the fact that this thing tips the scales at over 10 pounds, it's got plenty of get up and go. You push the throttle, it goes right up. Unlike some other birds we've been flying lately, it's, uh, it doesn't really feel heavy at all. It feels solid in the air, but it's got plenty of juice to move when you want it to. So, uh, nicely done, guys. Well, you know what? This this flies really, really well, actually. Like a much lighter aircraft. It's pretty agile in the air. You can, you can tell it's heavy, but it, it doesn't, it just kind of powers through. It doesn't really bog it down, and it powers through it pretty nicely. It actually, one thing I notice is when it's descending straight into its own prop wash, it doesn't wobble back and forth as much as some do. And actually, it's pretty good about that. It's, it's surprisingly stable in descent. That's nice, actually. I always didn't like when you're going straight down your own prop washer kind of bounces back and forth a lot. Nope, not happening here at all. It's pretty nice. And uh, the lights are, I can see the uh, the light right now for their, the NASA. It's clear and bright from this angle. Uh, the little lights in daylight kind of get lost, but you know what, they're there for nighttime. Works great there. And um, boy, it just it just flies like a much lighter bird. It's got so much power, I think. It, it really nicely done. This is, this is a nice aircraft. You know, for as heavy as it is, you really wouldn't know. It's got plenty of power to spare. If you're descending, you push the throttle, it just stops and goes up. It's great. Not a problem at all. I'm just casually tossing around the sky here like it was a much lighter aircraft and it's just responding nicely. You know, perfect. <laughs> and that was our look at the Vortex Hexacopter from Atlanta Hobbies. Cliff, we want to thank you so much for sending us out to us, and especially the custom color, man. Oh, that's just so beautiful. <laughs> Hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.